Hello, so in this quick video I'm going to show you how you can use the Chip Whisperer software with this Acebo W board, um, and this is without the Open ADC, so with a regular uh, oscilloscope. Um, so you've got to go through the Quick Start Guide, uh, you can get it online here, uh, and it goes through setting up the board, you have to program the uh, the FPGA on it. Uh, as a note, if you don't have the, the platform cable, uh, you can get cheap ones. What I did is I actually bought off AliExpress just these low-cost clone cables that worked fine. Um, or it is possible to use the uh, the FTDI chip, but it's a bit slow. I have a blog post on that to program it. Uh, you program the smart card as needed, and you should then check that the um, basically you need to get to the point that this is working the uh, the software runs on the card okay so we can try that um, so I have it all plugged in here off screen uh, so here's the quick start guide it comes with and which is it so this exe here uh, basically it shows up as a com port and if you hit start it gets the answer to reset the bottom and then starts the encryption uh, so while we have that running I'm going to connect an oscilloscope here so we can view what the waveform uh, looks like just in our little oscilloscope connection so I have a picoscope model and I'm using going to use channel B for triggering and it's a 10 times probe uh, and the power measurement will AC couple it and limit it to something uh, so if you go through the, the quick start guide, it shows you somewhere the, the connection for the, the power measurement, the shunt, and stuff like that, and the trigger. So I'll go ahead and connect those up now. Uh, connect the power, SMA. So you can see some, uh, some encryption operations or something happening here, and then the trigger. Uh, we see the trigger rolling by, so we set the trigger, and there we go. So this is basically what we're expecting it to look like. Um, play around a little bit, something's going on funny here. It might be, oh, so it just finished the, uh, the encryption, so let's start again. So there we go. So it was just the sample rate was too slow. So there was some undersampling. Um, so there you go. So this is what we are expecting to see uh, once it's all done. And you can play around with various settings if you want to try to improve the noise or anything like that. But at this point, let's go ahead and get it working with the Chip Whisperer software. So I'll close that and I'll close PicoScope. All right, so uh, you would have had, you can see the other videos about installing and setting up the, the Chip Whisperer software, uh, or you can use the uh, virtual machine, Chip Whisperer instance, as I call it. And you should get to the point that you have this Chip Whisperer capture window running. Uh, you'll want to check PicoScope comes up as a scope option. E, by default, it won't be there, and you have to install a uh, PicoScope Python module, so there's some details I'll link in on that. Um, and you also should have a smart card target. Again, you may have to install some additional Python modules for that target to come up. Um, but the first thing we'll do is get the smart card running, so I'll select the target type as smart card. Um, and then on target settings tab here, we need to set the reader hardware. So the reader hardware is actually just a serial port. Uh, so you can just select system serial, which has the SIBO W in brackets just to, uh, so you know that. Uh, so note that we're not selecting the SIBO W anywhere here. It's only under the reader hardware. Um, and for the protocol itself, we're using the SIBO W smart card OS. So that's, you know, the type of card it's expecting. Um, so we have to tell it those two things. And now we have to tell it what COM port to use. So to get it to populate the available COM port, you hit refresh. Uh, and here we have COM25. You may have other ones, so you can check, you know, which ones are available. All right, so that's all you need to do. And then hit the target connect button up here. Um, and it connects to the target, and it actually it should give you the, the answer to reset. So I can hit this button, 
and you can see in here it's printing the uh, the answer to reset from the card. Uh, you can also, under the general settings tab, you can hit open monitor. Um, and if you hit capture one, what you should see is the text in and uh, text out. And if you have the Pi Crypto modules installed, it's going to tell you what it expects that um, crypto operation to result in. So you can sort of verify that things are as you expect. Uh, so there you go. So that's how you get the the first part working. Uh, the next thing we need to do is actually measure the power traces. So this is pretty easy. Um, we select our scope. So I'm using a Pico scope. Uh, if you have another Visa connected oscilloscope, uh, like USB or Ethernet connected, you can use the Visa scope module, and you're almost certainly going to need to install or modify it to work with your scope, just in terms of what commands to send it. But uh, for Pico scope, it should just work and one of these supported models. So I have a PS6000 connected. Um, so we see if that works. Uh, so before we change any settings, we have to connect on the scope. And you can't see it, but that little Pico scope window opens uh, and the scope powers up. You hear the fan come up. Um, all right, so now we can basically just go through and look at our settings. So we're saying we're gonna trigger on channel B uh, by this is just default, so that happens to be right for us. Uh, we're triggering, it's saying 500 millivolts. Let's change this to 1.5 volts. Uh, the sample rate, that's fine for now. And the range of the trigger in the range of the, um, the source for the power measurement. So this all looks good, so we can hit capture one. And we can start to see some waveform here. Um, what the issue is, it looks sort of blocky, uh, and why this is, is our Y range isn't very good, so we want to reduce it from uh, 1 volt, maybe let's try 100 millivolt. So maybe that's a little better. Um, and if you go too low, so if I set it to say 50 millivolt, you'll notice there's a warning here that says overflowing data. So that's telling you uh, somewhere it's clipping, probably these spikes, so it's hard to tell, but uh, you're overloading the, the front end, so don't do that. So you definitely want it to not overload like that, and that looks like an okay waveform. All right, finally, you can choose how many sample points to take. If you take a lot, uh, it'll consume a fair amount of memory in the system. Um, so I'm going to, let's do 20,000 maybe. So it depends a bit on your sample rate and everything like that, but... Pretty sure that'll be enough to capture the AES. All right, so now we have a power measurement. Uh, the final thing we need to do is tell it how to save this, so the native format I'm going to use. And, and I'm just going to save a new project here, test the SIBO W YouTube. Um, and we'll just record 100 traces, that's fine. So now it's going to send the uh, the data to the card, record the traces, and you can monitor it if you want, uh, while recording the power measurements. All right, great, so we're done. Um, and you can save this project, and I'm just gonna close it. You may not wanna close it because you, then you've gotta set everything up again. Uh, you can also look into setting up a script once you've figured out how, what sort of settings you uh, are using, you can just make an easy script to, uh, to help you reconfigure that. All right, there we go. So next I launch the analyzer and what I'm gonna do is open that project I just saved. Um, and you can see the waveform here. So if you want, you can overlay a few waveforms, for example, to uh, Sort of get a view of how of the, if the, the trigger was working okay and stuff like that. Um, so there's maybe a tiny bit of jitter, but I'm not too worried about it. All right. So all we have to do now is you can select the uh, the attack information if you want. I'm just using the default, and I'll hit start attack. So one thing you might get if you have longer traces is you may get a memory error, um, and this means that it's run out of sufficient memory to load the trace data into RAM. Uh, you frequently get this with the 32-bit version of Python because it 
on assuming you're on a 64-bit system to start with. Um, for the cap, for the analysis, you may want to use the 64-bit version. Um, for the capture, you might not be able to. Some of the drivers only support the 32-bit, so you have a bit of an annoyance here that you might need to install 64 and 32-bit um, versions of Python. Um, and we can start to see now, so this is uh, the correct key guesses are in red, so you can see they're starting to filter to the top. Um, so I haven't done any pre-processing here, and I may not have had the correct trace length, um, so there's still some improvements you can make. Um, but you can see it is starting to recover the data. Oh, there we go. So it got most of the uh, the points. So, and then you can, for example, look at where... Uh, so here we got the memory error when we tried to plot. So again, when you're using the... Uh, yeah, the 32-bit version of Python, uh, you do run into that on these larger traces. Uh, so we can at least plot, you know, the partial guessing entropy over time for all the bytes, but we can't get the, uh, per point, the, um, the correlation output. We can plot this type of stuff that shows how the correlation was uh, changing over time, so all the correct guesses coming out of the incorrect guesses. But that's it. So that's a quick overview of using the Sasebo W board uh, on with the Chip Whisperer software, but without using the Open ADC version. So previously, you know, on the if you look on the tutorial, what you might have seen side channel was there's a uh, there is a tutorial for using the Sasebo W board, but it assumes you're using the the open ADC on it. So this is without using this. Um, so it's a little different because we're not we're not using the open ADC. We're using an external oscilloscope with the default uh, Sasebo W FPGA bitstream. That's important. It's a different bitstream than this tutorial. So none of this tutorial is relative to using it as is. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. If you have questions, you can always ask on the forum as well.